What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. What's up, everyone? It's another episode of Next Level Thinking, where we always aim to inspire you and take it to the next level. Also, keep in mind, I am the host, Chris Holmes, as always. But today is not about me. It's about my special guest by the name of... Hi, my name is Lanelle Green. I'm here with Happy With Daddy. Awesome. So go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself so they can know a little bit more about you. So, yeah, like I said, uh, Lanelle Green, we're Happy With Daddy. And uh, my platform is to celebrate and encourage fathers um, worldwide to um, be involved in their children's lives and just give recognition to, to dads out there everywhere and make sure that people, you know, don't forget about dads and the important role that, that fathers play in, in their children's lives. Awesome, awesome. So, like, um, what was... I guess the main drive to push off the name because you know you have a lot of fathers out there but like what clicked inside your mind like you know what I feel like I have a purpose in doing this so like kind of bring us back on how, how it originated um so the main thing is I'm, I'm a single father with two uh beautiful daughters and um I, I just you know taking pictures on my Instagram page and Facebook page I got a lot of people just saying oh your, your daughters are so cute you guys seem so happy um and then just being out with my daughters a lot of people would come up to us and be like, oh, your daughters are so beautiful. They're happy. You guys seem, you know, it's like, they, like they're having a good time. You seem like such a good dad. And so one day just kind of brainstorming with my sisters and they, they said the same thing. They're like, man, I, you know, you're such a good dad. I got some friends who you could help and, and try to encourage and, and uplift and started giving me some contacts. And, and um, they said, you should, you should look into doing something to help other fathers out. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, uh, you know, let's see. So we kind of looked on the internet and the kind of ideas that just started coming to my mind i was like let me see if there's anybody out there doing anything similar and there's people out there doing things similar to it but um you know where i want to take this and and where i'm going was was different and so i was like let's let's go with it and it actually started so one day i posted a picture of uh, my youngest daughter and i put the hashtag happy with daddy and it's the (laughs) most likes I've ever gotten on any of my Instagram photos (laughs) and the most likes and the most comments. And so everything after that, I just put anything with my daughters in it. I just put hashtag happy with daddy and it just took off from there. And here we are. Awesome. Awesome. That's a great story. Uh, We need more inspiration like that. And I feel like uh, what probably helped make it a lot more like boosting and engaging is because uh, I feel like America wants to see more of a, whole family together of the mother and the father or just pretty much seeing the father just taking a, um, their um, responsibility and taking action for their uh, kids because I feel like sadly there's a lot of trends in society where the father's not there and when you post that um, picture and like happy with daddy people are like oh my god finally <laughs> and they probably right. just hopped on to it yeah it's just um, I mean the surprising thing that I, I didn't know going into this was how many female followers that I have. I mean, a lot of my supporters and the ones that are commenting and the ones that send me messages saying, we need something like this, this is so refreshing to see, are my female followers. Um, a lot of the people that are tagging are uh, mothers, their wives, their girlfriends, uh, moms of you know, that are tagging me of these pictures with their, um, you know, with the, the father and the son or the father and the daughter. So um, I, I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, so many female supporters, but uh, a lot of my supporters are females who are just happy to see, like you said, like, yes, finally, like, this is awesome. And, you know, keep going. Yes. And like, you, you, what you just pretty much said in your statement is like very important, like data to that. Like, it's like wake up in reality. It's like, it basically from, what you experience is telling us like, you know, the ladies that we have out there are wanting the fathers to uh, take more involvement in the child's life. And with you doing this, and of course with the movement, uh, hopefully it will spark that next uh, next big change because we need to see this more often. Now, <clears throat> with that said, um, what is like some of the happy, okay, I know there's like a huge list of them, but like what is like the top three happy, I mean, gainers from like being impact, I mean, being a part of your child's life? So say 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 that again. I, I want to understand the question. So basically, what I'm asking, like, what are like the top three gains you get from like being a father in your child's life? Um, 
the top three games that I personally get. Yeah, I know there's a lot, so but just list your top three. Um, so I'd say the top three things that I gain from from being involved in my kids' life is, um, for one, being the the father of of two girls. You you're gonna you're gonna have appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> so right off the bat, you're gonna have an appreciation for um, females. And even though my daughters are very young. Um, you start to see things differently and you start mm-hmm. to treat women and, and females differently. Not saying that I treated them bad before, but it, it takes it to a whole nother level to where, you know, you have a different appreciation. So um, appreciation would be one. Okay. Um, second would be, um, you know, vulnerability, you know, and, and being vulnerable and, and understanding. Once I became a father, I understood that I had to be transparent and I had to be vulnerable. And so with vulnerability comes you know, another level of, of, of you, another level of success. And, and it's scary, but mm-hmm. um, on the other side of fear is, is greatness. So um, I've been vulnerable, I've been more open, and I've learned that, you know, it, it, it helps. Um, and probably the third thing I would probably say is um, just the, the drive. Um, okay. my, my motor, my drive is it is insane <laughs> you know what I, mean? I can i can uh i can go to sleep for four hours and that's enough for me and i can get up and and i'm ready to go you know what's next and my drive is is um it's intense and i think it stems from you know wanting to make sure my daughters have a, a solid future and, and for me to do the best that i can to leave them um you know with every everything that i can to make sure that they're successful Awesome, awesome. Now, I want to key on, like, your second one, and that is vulnerability. Now, you know, as a lot of guys, we have pride. <laughs> and when you yep. hear the words vulnerable, you're like, what, wait a minute, what? 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 No, 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 I'm not about to do that. But, like, uh, but from your experience, tell the viewers, like, why it is important to be vulnerable when, like, you know, talking to, like, each other much more. Because I feel like that's one thing that we just kind of, like, toss to the side a lot because of pride. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll start by saying my number one, um, you know, question that I get asked and, and messaged about with Happy With Daddy is either it's most likely a female or a guy himself telling me, you know, hey, I need help with this. Can you help me? What should, you know, and it always leads to opening up and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And what comes from that is, um, you know, break, breaking down that communication is this, you, if you don't communicate your feelings then you, you can't you can't move on you know and so a lot of guys they hear that word like you said and it's, it's just like nah i can't i'm, I'm nah. not gonna talk you know what I, mean? I, I can't i can't but the one thing i tell them is if you're vulnerable to your partner if you're vulnerable to your spouse it's just you and your spouse in the room it's not like you guys are on a reality tv show and everybody's like oh yeah oh mm-hmm. man look at him like you know what i mean i was like it's just you and it's just you and, and that person that you're being vulnerable to you know what i mean and so usually when i break it down like that they kind of understand because um that person that you're with or even if it's you know um for instance with, with me my ex-wife we have a great co-parent relationship great mm-hmm. great great and it's because we are vulnerable it's because i'm vulnerable and i'll, I'll tell <laughs> men all the time a lot of guys don't want to hear it, but I say, you know what? A lot of it is your fault. Ouch. <laughs> that's like, truth what? right there. They're like, what? And, I, and that's, that's how I tell them. I say, I'm, I listen to their story, and I say, you're in the wrong. And that's not what they want to hear a lot of times. I said, but you got to communicate. As soon as you communicate and open up, you'll be surprised. I mean, my, my ex-wife, our co-parenting relationship is solely the way it is because I'm vulnerable and I'm open. If I was closed, and, and I mean, it, who knows, man? It would be... It would be an uphill battle trying Probably to a little bit more rocky. <laughs> trying to work with her. So um, on the other side of vulnerability, like I said, man, it's it's it's, it's going to open up so many doors for you if you just learn to be vulnerable. And, and and another thing I tell guys is, you know, when you leave this earth, you know, we're not going to sit there and be like, man, I remember Chris, but um, why that, you know, why did he get all soft, you know, ten years ago and get vulnerable? Like, why was he so open? Like, you know what I mean? Nobody's mm-hmm. going to remember remember you for being. Uh, open, soft guy, you know what I mean? Right. They're going to be like, you know, he was a great guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so, you know, that, that you're not going to be judged on on opening up. So, uh, you know, you might as well do it. It's, it's not going to hurt you. I tell people all the time, it's not going to kill you. It's not, it really doesn't hurt. There's no, there's no pain. You don't get a shot. It's not like getting a shot. It's not like breaking a leg or an arm. You have no pain from it. <laughs> 
And not only with the parenting thing, I'm going to key a little bit more on this. I feel like communication is like foundation in life. I mean, we do it at our workplace, I mean, of course, with our partners, or we're trying to give commands, or just trying to get a task done to impact the community, or just, you know, motivating others, or just like, you know, this podcast. Uh, I feel like communication is a bit a big part of everybody's lives. And if you don't really establish that, there's going to be a lot of miscommunication, and it's going to be a lot of... Uh, misunderstanding, rockiness, and mess like that, and I think it's very important to stay just like you were saying earlier, open and just communicate your things because, like my grandma used to always say, a closed mouth doesn't get fed, and how can you find out somebody else's problems if you don't pretty much open up your mouth? <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, yes. So with that, like, what are some? Okay, now with all the good things, what is like the top three challenges when it comes to raising a child from your perspective? Uh, top three challenges and I'm going to obviously focus a little bit more just with, with fathers it could be different mm -hmm. and it will be different with mothers um, but it's, it's going to lead to we'll, we'll start off again with the with vulnerability um, you know just, just showing your kids that, that there's emotion inside of you and I'll use my father as an example um, I didn't see my dad cry until I was 26, 27 years old. First time I've seen, and not just cry, but that's mm -hmm. the first time I've seen any sort of sadness come from him. And I was like shocked. You know, I thought he was a robot. You know what I mean? And so me and my dad have a good relationship, but it's not, we don't have an emotional connection relationship. You know gotcha. what I mean? And so nowadays, um, you know, with, with things being the way they are, bullying in school and, and kids being able to go to Google to, to parent themselves, you got to be vulnerable. You got to let them know that it's okay to go talk to dad and dad's not just going to say, go back out there and rub it off, put some dirt on it. Um, so vulnerability. Um, and then I would probably say um, another challenge would be social media. Oh, And that's, yeah. that's, that's one thing that I, that I talk about is who you are on Instagram has got to be who you are in your day-to-day. -day. <laughs> some, some of these guys are out here and they're taking pictures with their kids and showing them, you know, on the carousel and, and here's a selfie and, you know, got their kids, arms around their kids, smiling, and then for the picture and then after the picture, you know, hey, go over there and go play on, on, the, on the computer. You know, go do that. And they, you know what I mean? And it's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, you got to be who, because now you send the mixed signals to, to yeah. your child. You know, and we can't have that because whatever you won't teach them, they will find on Google. Real quick. I mean, let's <laughs> be honest. We know the internet them. is real fast too, like YouTube and yeah. all that. <laughs> exactly. So you want to you want to tell them to go upstairs, and you're mad at them or whatever. They will. They can go Google and find out what it is they need to find out. So you have to. Eliminate, <laughs> you got to eliminate Google. You can't let Google raise your kids. You can't let so you can't let them go on Instagram and see another father son. And, and want to be that and, and inspire to be that and, and that's how you know they get so in tune into that that they forget that you and them have something you know and so definitely social media number two and then number three I would say um, the biggest challenge is is understanding that you are on a stage all, all the time hmm. even if you are driving and somebody cuts you off and you you, you're, on, you're, on stage, you're on stage performing, and your daughters, your sons are—they're the crowd. Yes, and so they—they're they're watching you. You know, no matter what you think you're doing, they could be upstairs. Some, sometimes people are like, oh well, I, we we went downstairs and we were arguing. I'm like, okay, the kids still hurt it. They still, you know, or even if you step outside and you get in, you, you're upset. Even at your boss or something, man, you know, whatever. You come back in the house. Mm -hmm. What's your vibe look like when you come back in the house? Because kids can read that. Yep. <laughs> you know, they can sense it. So you got to know you're always on stage. That's the, that's a hard, hard thing for, um, you know, for parents to understand is you are always on stage and they will pick up on your vibe. When you don't think they do, they, they pick up on it. Yep. And that's a very, especially that third one is like, um, no matter where you at, where you're going, someone's watching. Either if you're doing a lot of good things, which is great. And even if when you're doing bad, like somebody's watching and, and like your kids are soaking up everything. I feel like a lot of times we underestimate like uh, how much our kids can like understand what's going on. Like other oh, kids don't like, oh, yes, they do. Like never, exactly. <laughs> never say that because they may not say it, but they're watching and they're paying yep. attention. Like even taking little minor notes. Yep. 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 So with that, uh, let's see what, uh, let's see how I can, 
Because this is uh, this is like a one of those tricky questions, but I'm trying to see how I can say it. Okay. When when your child makes a mistake, and you know life is about making you know mistakes and learning from it, what do you think is the best way to help them learn so they can move forward? Okay, so this is funny. We, me and my uh, five year old daughter just had this conversation the other day. So uh, she was talking about mistakes, and and she said. Uh, she said, Daddy, do you, do you make mistakes? And so first and foremost, you got to let them know you are not Superman. Yes, I have Superman shirts. And yes, they call me <laughs> Super Dada. Yeah. But at the same time, I make a mistake. And I told her, I said, you have no idea how many mistakes I've made. And she was like, eyes wide open. She was like, really? I was like, baby girl, I make a mistake probably every other day, if not every day. I said, I make a ton of mistakes. And she was just like shocked. So for me, you got to let them know that, you know, you make mistakes. You are not perfect. You know, and I said, you're going to make a ton of mistakes in your life. I said, you're only five years old. You are going to make so many mistakes. And most of them you'll look back and laugh on. Yep. And um, the funny thing is, is about five minutes later, she dropped her tablet Oops. off the kitchen counter and broke the screen. Oh, no. And so... We both just sat there. She said, Daddy? I said, yeah. She said, is that a mistake? And, man, I bust out laughing. <laughs> and I couldn't even be mad. And I wasn't I wasn't mad, but I couldn't even try. And so I laughed. And I, and, and the other thing, too, is a lot of times men have to understand we are, we're, we're usually bigger. We're usually mm-hmm. taller. We have bass in our voice. Don't stand over your kids when you are talking to them about them doing something wrong don't make it seem like you were looking down on them. So one thing I always do, I can be in a grocery store, I can be at the mall, I get down to my kids' level. I either pick them up and bring them up to me so we can talk, or I get down to their level and I talk to them. I don't ever want them to think that daddy's a big guy who looks down on me and and talks down to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, they don't need to see that from me. They're probably gonna experience at some point in their life, whether it be a boss, a manager, a teacher, whatever but I don't want that for for them to come to me so I get down and we talk and I have always been this way with my daughters I talk to them as if I'm talking to you Chris I I, even when they're two three years old talk to your kids and let them understand exactly the why you don't have to give them every single detail Mm -hmm. because they're young but make sure you give them enough detail because they're young and so my daughters understand a lot of of you know, why you may not do something or what, what did you learn? And then ask them, ask them, say, hey, what, what did you learn from, from dropping that tablet? You know, what, what did you learn from the tablet, the screen breaking? I, you know, and I probably shouldn't have put it on the kitchen counter um, or I shouldn't have put it at the edge of the kitchen counter. I probably should have pushed it back some so it didn't have a chance to fall or I should have put it down or I shouldn't have had my hands full. You know, there's different things. That, and listen, listen to what they're saying and listen to the answer. And so I told her, you know, that that's great. You learn, now you know. You probably won't break another tablet. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or you probably won't break it the same way. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't say you probably won't break another tablet, but you probably won't break it the same way because in her mind, you know, we had that conversation. And she's like, okay, she answered it for me. I didn't give her the answer. She answered it for me. Um, and then that's just how you, you teach your kids to learn from mistakes. Talk to your kids. You know, and I know they're not adults. But don't always, you know, stand over them and come down on them and point. You know what I mean? Because they're smart. Mm-hmm. They are very, very smart kids. And they can answer the questions that you ask them. You know, you ask them the right questions. So um, that, that's how kind of I, I feel you should approach having your kids learn from their mistakes. All right. Awesome, awesome. Like, I'm taking notes myself, even though I don't have kids yet. But I feel like this, <laughs> this is like, okay, it's, it's like, hey, Chris, uh, take notes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Yes. Future notes. Yeah, future notes. Okay, I'm looking through your website, and there's uh, one quote that caught my interest, and I want to get your uh-huh. um, feedback on it. It says, like, one father is more than 100 schoolmasters. So that's very powerful right there, but I want to hear your view on it. So when 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 people look at, at their dad, if, if your father is involved, if your father is in your life, and has done the things that they've needed to do as a father. You are going to trust and believe in them more than any schoolmaster, any teacher, any professor, anything that you hear out there if they're involved. And perfect example is me and my dad. Um, 
you know, my parents split up when I was nine years old. I got two sisters. They went to go stay with my mom, and I was like, I got, I'm staying with my dad because at that time I was sports. I mean, I was sports from, you. you know, fall, winter, spring, summer, just boom, 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 boom soccer, basketball, baseball, football. And, it, and he, he taught me all that. And there was nothing that a coach could tell me that, I, you know what I mean, that, that mm. would trump what my dad said. Because my dad was an athlete, and because he talked to me and said, "Look, you know, this is why you need to do this, and this is why." So, for him, he he all my coaches. My dad is my best coach, and I always I will always say that. Um, now, whether he was or wasn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? that's, that's a different story. He probably really wasn't my best coach, but because we had that relationship and because we had that trust, I, I thought he was just the best you know what I mean I thought he was the best and so and that was because he was involved he cared and um I was able to go to him you know if I had a bad football game a bad basketball game I can go to him and talk and be like I don't I only score two points you know well you scored two points because this is this and that Mm -hmm. and so um you know I think as a father when you're involved and you you're knowledgeable and you care you show vulnerability and, and all the things that come with fatherhood when you do that you are giving them somebody that they know that they can go to for the rest of their life. You know, um, even right now, I'm 33 years old. I can call my dad and we'll talk about, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers and Warriors game last night. We'll talk about (laughs) it and and break it down. And and I still value his opinion when it comes to just about anything to do with sports. I still value my dad's opinion at 33 years old. Yes. And you know, that's very um, important. It's like keeping that communication and relationship especially um, with your, you know, father and things like that, because that goes so long. Um, I feel like and that's another one of those things that we, um, we don't really we forget how much value it is until, like, and, you know, it's gone. But, you know, I'm great, uh, glad to see you doing that. Now, uh, with that said, like, what is uh, some of the next big things you have uh, planned up with this movement? Um a lot of inspiration from it, great information. I'm taking mental notes for myself in the future. <laughs> so, like, um, what is some of the future goals with this? Um, so, like we kind of talked about before we got started here, it's, it's, the momentum right now is, is very great with Happy With Daddy. And so um, I'm doing a lot of networking right now um, and a lot of collaborating. Um, here in Atlanta, Georgia, I got a couple Father's Day events that I have coming up where I've collaborated. Um, I got a Father's Day barbecue that, that I'm going to be joining um, down in Atlanta in the park and getting some dads together. Um, but some of my next projects um, are going to be, I'm, I'm currently working on a YouTube series um, with, a, with a good friend of mine who is a mental health coach. And uh, she's also um, a divorced mom with two kids, and it's two total different aspects. I have a great co-parenting relationship, and her co-parenting relationship is non-existent. And we're going to be presenting about seven or eight topics on uh, on our YouTube series for for co-parenting and just giving some advice. And hopefully, you know, somebody can listen to it and and we can help them out with that. Um, also, I have a um, I'm going to be jumping on a, a single parents podcast with a friend. Um, as, as a guest very shortly here as a, as a guest just not once but I'll probably be on there a, a few times and um, hopefully uh, you know down the road I'm, I'm really looking to get um, public speaking I'm looking to get on, on stage and workshops and, and uh, help some help some fathers out and uh, just give out some advice and be a lending ear and try to get some, some dads to um, communicate and, and be open and hopefully they can they can learn something from me. But my ultimate goal down the road is definitely to uh, to do workshops and and get on stage and help people out and, and and try to go that route and help people tell tell my story, share my story. But um, those are some of the things that I have coming up immediately um, uh, with the co-parenting series and the the single parent podcast. Awesome, awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Tremendous amount of information. Uh, nine times out of ten, I'll we'll have you. I guess again. Uh, especially if I have kids. <laughs> so, but um, exactly. with that all said, um, like, where can they find you on social media? Uh, okay, so Instagram, happy with daddy. Um, hashtag, just look for nice big green face. Um, <laughs> happy, happy with daddy. I'm also happy with daddy.com. Um, you can go on there. You can see any of the events. I always do a, I do a daddy feature every month where I specialize in, in uh, 
I feature a dad, and we ask some some of the questions similar to kind of some of the questions you asked me today, and I put some pictures up of that of that father. And like I said, I do one every month. Um, Facebook, you can also find me at Happy with Daddy, um, and then also on HappyWithDaddy.com, you'll see I have some apparel, um, I have some T-shirts, and I have some coffee mugs um, that you you know more than welcome to, to celebrate your dad, and, and don't forget your dad's, um, you know so. That's where you can find me at. Awesome, awesome. Great information. And, you know, share this with all the fathers. Uh, this is the information we need. So keep the love going and that communication, vulnerability, and much more. Again, this is your host, Chris Holmes, deliver, delivering you inspiration and things to keep it up. And my special guest by the name of... Linnell Green from Happy With Daddy. And we're out. Peace. <laughs> I'm